Hey you guys, all right, today I have another reformer workout for you. This one's gonna be full body. Okay, so we're gonna hit it all. Very minimal props today. So you need your jump board. We're gonna start with jumping. Um, so get that right up there on the machine. And I have light dumbbells. So I have a pair of three pounders today. If you do not have dumbbells, don't worry. You can do this entire workout without it. They're only gonna add difficulty and resistance. Okay, so they're not gonna aid in any sort of work. They're just gonna make the work a little bit harder. So if you have dumbbells, great. If you don't and you wanna still use something, you maybe you have water bottles, just make sure they're filled um, or something like that. Perfect, uh, just a weighted object in each hand, but make sure it's light. I would go two or three pounds, okay? Um, I am working on a balanced body reformer today. We are, since we're starting with jumping, we're gonna start on a blue and a yellow spring. So that's an extra light and a light spring for me. My machine did not come with that yellow spring. I added that. So if you have an extra light spring, excellent. Put it on there. If you do not, just go with that one light spring. If you wanna add on one more spring, you could, um, but I would suggest staying pretty light for the jump sequence. It's longer, it's gonna be more cardio based and we're definitely gonna challenge the core. Um, the jump board is gonna come down midway, so we will pause for that really quickly. I have my headrest up because I have quite an arch to the back of my neck, so that's gonna help me. If you want your headrest up, go ahead, put it up. If not, you can have it down. Uh, we're gonna be using our straps today, so make sure those short and long loops are ready to go. And that's it. If my machine looks a little different, it's because I have the infinity foot bar, but we are not gonna be using the foot bar today, so don't worry about that. Um, and I think that's it. All right, this whole workout should be about 60 minutes, one hour. Okay, and we'll have a little stretch at the end and, and we'll hit it all. All right, get nice and sweaty. All right, you guys, let's do it. So grab those weights, go ahead, lie down on your back. Okay, we're gonna get set up for jumping right away on our back. So we have a longer sequence here. You're gonna use those dumbbells. If at any point they get too aggressive, you drop them down to the side and you don't need anything at all. We're gonna start with our feet four inches apart, parallel, feet are nice and flat on the jump board. We're gonna lengthen all the way out to two straight legs, okay? Toes are shining up. Those weights are gonna start up and over the chest. So I want you to make sure that those palms are coming right off the underarm, so they're just right over the chest. We've got that neutral spine. So there's a tiny lift in the low back, but I'm not creating that lift, it's natural. Okay, the tailbone is nice and heavy, belly button's pulled up and in, and my ribs are closed. We're gonna maintain that posture as we exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, take it out for a little hop. Okay, so right here, we're gonna start to warm up through those feet and through the ankles. So we want full articulation, rolling through the entire foot. So when I land, I land through the ball of my foot, roll all the way down to my heel, make sure that heel makes a full connection. When I leave, the heel peels up first, and then I hop through those toes. Good, so I'm real big stickler about jumping, okay? You probably heard me say that in my other videos, but I want you to make sure that those heels make a full connection every time you land on that jump board. You want an entire, that entire sole of the foot on the jump board. And it's not just gonna be there for a second and pop off, you want it to stick. Okay, I always tell people to think about gymnastics, right? They need to stick their landing to get that full 10 points. All right, so same thing here for these jumps to be really beneficial and to challenge the flexibility through the ankle and through the back line of the leg, we really wanna get that heel down. And that flexibility will increase over time. That knee bend, we manage the depth of the bend, keeping the heel connected to the jump board. Because the deeper we bend those knees, the harder it is to keep that heel connected. All right, now we're gonna add a little chest press in this position. So we're gonna turn those palms to face forward. Elbows are gonna bend and then up. Good. You know, I'm gonna change my, I'm gonna start down, okay? And then as you jump, press up. I had my little, my, my sink was off. So as you leave that jump board, those palms press up towards the ceiling, okay? It should feel light, it shouldn't feel heavy. Okay, just full body movement right here. You should start to feel that heat through the body, keeping those shoulders relaxed and down the back. The shoulder blades always wrap the ribs, even though we're lying down, we keep those ribs closed as we leave that jump board. Whew, 
I'm starting to feel that heat already, even through the legs, through the front line of the legs. Good, you guys. All right, we're gonna change into first position in four. Last three, two, last one. Pause for just a moment. Now, right here, we're gonna take those arms back into parallel, bring them up over the chest. We're gonna bring the heels together, toes turned out, so we are in first position. Lengthen those legs all the way out so the inner thighs are zipped up. We've got two straight legs. Right from here, we're gonna bend both knees and take it out for a little hop. Holding those heels together, first position. We wanna glue those heels together like they're super glued. Okay, they're not gonna separate. We're gonna zip up through the inner thigh as we leave the jump board. And now we're gonna add those arms. So as we leave, we're gonna bend the elbows. Palms are facing in. Okay, it's a little tricep kickback. Those, the bell of the weight comes towards the forehead or towards the crown of the head, I should say. It's not really coming towards the forehead because it's a little bit past that. Good, you guys. So in other modalities, you might call this movement through the upper body, it's skull crusher, okay? I don't like to say that so much in Pilates. Doesn't sound very Pilates-esque. Okay, but I want you to just think about that full body movement right here. You should feel that right and left waistline kick on with this movement. Good, inhaling as you leave, exhaling as you land. That inhale is going to aid in that internal length throughout the body. Good, you guys, you got six. We're gonna keep going in five. Good, last four, no pausing, keep jumping. Last three, two, last one. Now right here, we're gonna find an ab curl. So one ab curl reaching the weights forward. I'm still jumping in first position. I haven't stopped. Okay, right here, just hold that ab curl. Good, you guys, those shoulder blades are peeled off the carriage. Good, I've got lots of length on the front body. My chin is away from my chest. Holding those weights out there, they add quite a bit of difficulty to this jump sequence. Good, you guys. Now we're gonna add a little air jack here. So we're gonna open the arms and legs as we leave and then close to land. So we're making a V with both the legs and the arms. I've got lots of control here. I'm not just flailing and sloppy through the upper body, okay? Same with those legs. Heels are always touching down. Every time I land, back in that first position. Whoo! Feel the heat, right? We're gonna go single leg in eight, seven, so we will pause. In six, five, four. Keep those ribs closed. Three, last two, and last one, and bring it all the way in now. My left leg, okay, keep the first position, heels together, toes turned out. My left leg is gonna hover over the top of the jump board. My inner thigh is still shining towards the ceiling, so I went from that first position, and I kept the first position as I hovered the leg over the jump board. So even though my feet are separated now, they're still in that turned out or external rotation. My left arm is gonna rest with the weight down by my side, and my right arm is gonna start up and over the chest. I'm gonna find one ab curl. So exhale, curl and hold. Now, as we inhale and jump away, I'm gonna twist and reach for that left ankle. I'm not gonna reach the left ankle, okay? I'm concentrating on picking that right shoulder blade up off the carriage. My right arm stays straight. I reach with my ribs, okay? So my right rib basket I twist so it can get a little closer to my left inner thigh. I want you to think more about the ribs and less about the weight or the shoulder. Good, holding it here. Whew. I'm sweaty already. <laughs> that was fast, right? The weights, they make such a difference. Good, you're here for six, five, four, Good, last three, last two, Woo, last one, and bring it all the way in. All right, let's switch. Bring those feet back to first position, heels down. 
Right arm is gonna rest by my side with that weight. Left arm is gonna come straight up to the ceiling at that underarm height. Palm facing in. I'm gonna lengthen both legs all the way out and reach that right leg just above the jump board. As I exhale and bend that, or sorry, let's take that ab curl first. So stay straight. Exhale. Draw the shoulder blades off the carriage. Hold that ab curl. Now let's bend that left knee. Inhale, take it out and twist. So real controlled, tight twist. Okay, my left ribs are now reaching for my right inner thigh. Okay, when I say weight to ankle, right? That's just the direction you're reaching in, but you're not gonna reach the ankle, okay? And we're not gonna find big momentum or that haya type of twist. I want it to be really controlled. Good, you guys, keep it going right here. Focus on that left heel, still making a nice connection to the jump board. We're here for eight. Whew, last seven. Good, you've got six. Last five. Good, you've got four. Last three, two, and last one. Whew, and bring it all the way in. All right, you guys. Last little thing, we're gonna start, we're gonna end just the way we started. Feet in parallel, lengthen back out, weights above the chest. Exhale, bend those knees. Inhale, leave. So exactly the way we started this jump sequence is the way we're gonna end it. We're gonna take this right into upper body jumps. Okay, and we've got quite a sequence there. Good, you guys. Now, starting to get tired with the jumping, those ribs might wanna flare. Keep them closed like a book. Pull that belly button in. Okay, maintain that neutral spine for eight. Good, last seven. We're here for six. Good, last five and four. Last three, two, and last one. And bring it all the way in. All right, come on up. We're gonna change those springs. So take off the blue, take off that light and keep the extra light on. Again, if you don't have an extra light spring, keep that blue spring on there, that one spring, and we'll work with that, okay? You might not be able to do as many reps, but we'll see. One weight's gonna go on the floor. We're gonna kneel on the carriage. Okay, and we're gonna face the right side of the reformer. I'm gonna be pretty close to the jump board. Okay, my knees are right at the edge of the carriage, and I'm gonna find a little hover. So start tall, start tall high kneeling, sternum over pubic bone, and from here, we're gonna hinge at the hips and reach those sits bones back for the heels and hold a hover. Okay, so you wanna maintain that position right there. We've got the tilt of the torso, but my ribs are closed, my ribs are stacked over my pelvis. Belly button pulled in. My left hand is gonna come to the corner of the jump board. Now you wanna get your full hand on there. Now my base of my right, or I'm sorry, the base of my left thumb doesn't touch, that's okay, but you don't want your fingertips off the jump board. If this is highly uncomfortable, you can be here, that's fine, but I want you to try to get that full hand on there. My right arm, that weight is gonna start right at the shoulder, palm facing in. From here, let's just start with a simple jump. Shoulders stay square. We're gonna inhale as we leave and roll through the fingers. Exhale to land. So you wanna make sure with these upper body jumps that your left palm, okay, the jumping hand, is in front of the shoulder, okay, that it's lining up in front of your shoulder, not right with the shoulder and not behind because that's gonna open up the ribs and that's gonna twist your body. Okay, we wanna keep that left palm right in front of the shoulder. Good, now right from here, we're gonna start to add that right arm. That right arm is gonna come out into an overhead press and then the next time it's gonna swing out into a T. Good, overhead press, keep the bicep in front of the ear and then out into a T. Good, now I'm rolling and articulating through that left palm just like I would my feet on that jump board. So I'm fighting for a full connection through the palm. Okay, now, even though I'm in this hovering position, I'm thinking about those inner thighs lifting up and into that pelvic floor. Okay, you notice my body is not shifting with the jump. I'm staying nice and controlled through the torso. Pelvis remains quiet, shoulders remain square. Good, and I feel my left tricep, and that right arm is just working. It's not tired yet. 
Good. All right, you guys, let's go for four more right here. Four. Good, let's go for three. Alternating that right arm movement. T. Good, next one's an overhead press, last two. And out into that T. Good, last one. Notice I'm not looking at you. I'm trying to keep the back of my neck nice and long. Now on the next one, we're going to hold that T as we jump. That T is just going to stay out there. I know you're starting to feel those quads, so I want you to think about those inner thighs squeezing up and into the pelvic floor. Pull that low belly up and in. Whew. Good, you guys. That left arm is getting tired. You're here for four. Last three. Make sure that right palm is below the shoulder. Last two. And last one. And fold it all the way in. All right, let's turn and face the jump board now. We're going to continue with those upper body jumps, and that weight is going to stay in the right hand. My kneecaps are going to hang just off the front of the carriage to protect the kneecap. All right, my knees are four inches apart parallel, and now I'm going to hover again. Okay, so these hovers, I know they're going to get aggressive after a while. Stay with me. Okay, stay with me. Try not to rest the butt on the heels. Hinged forward, belly button up and in. Left palm is on the jump board. Right palm at the shoulder with the weight. We're going to inhale as we leave the jump board, reach both arms. Bend the right in and land the left. So again, I'm working on full articulation through that left wrist and palm. If this is highly uncomfortable for you, keeping the fingertips on the jump board, the fingertips can come off the top. Okay, but try to get the full hand on there if you can. Good. Shoulders remain square to the jump board. Torso is quiet. Belly button is tight. I've got my shoulder blades wrapping my ribs so my shoulders stay away from my ears. Good. Inhale. Exhale to land. Inhale creates that internal length. Exhale as we land. Good. Let's go for four. Whew, we're going to add a little twist. Last three. Good. Last two. Make sure your toes are not turned under. Make sure they're relaxed. On your next one, we're going to add a little twist. So we're going to reach and come back to land. My right arm is going to twist across the body. My left arm pulls back for that twist. So I'm getting a torso rotation. Still keeping those shoulders down. I'm thinking about my right ribs reaching towards that left corner of the jump board. Pelvis is quiet. That doesn't change. Ribs stay stacked over the pelvis. I'm not flailing. Good, you guys. This is the only layer here. We got four. Last three. Good. We got two. That left arm pulls back. Good. You, hopefully you can see that in the mirror. Last one after this right here. Last one. And bring it all the way in. Woo, those legs too, right? Okay, we're going to come seated. Now make sure you have both weights nearby. We are going to need them, but we're not going to start with them right here. So stay on that one yellow spring if you have that extra light. If not, stay on your blue. Okay, feet are going to come to the jump board, and my hands are going to be propped up behind me. I've got my fingertips facing my butt, okay? Fingertips are all spread out nice and wide. So I've got a strong base of support through my palms. Heels together, toes turned out, first position. We're going to lengthen all the way out two straight legs. So I've zipped up my inner thighs, belly button pulled up and in. All right, right from here, whew, we're going to come into tailbone teaser jumps. So these are quite a challenge, and I want you to move slow. You are on a super light spring, so it's going to feel like you're floating, but it's going to challenge the core. So right here, exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, take it out for a little hop. So you're zipping up those inner thighs. The core needs to keep those legs up and lifted. I've got very little weight in my palms because those palms are going to start to leave the carriage. Okay, so I want you to start to think about that as you jump. I've got my sits bones connected to the carriage. And I've got that lean through the chest, leaning back. 
Shoulders are down, zipping up those inner thighs for that tight, low belly, inner thigh connection right there. Good. Now, if you feel comfortable here, we're going to challenge ourselves by bringing that left arm off the carriage. It's going to reach for the jump board. Just reach. Good. Remember, there's no shove right here. We are rolling and articulating through the feet. We are inhaling as we leave and exhaling as we land, still getting those heels to connect. Good. All right. Now holding that left hand there. If you are comfortable, you're going to bring the right arm there. So it's matching the left. If you were not comfortable or you just want that one arm still, switch hands. So the right arm is reaching now, not the left. But if you can get both hands off, go for it. The same rules apply. Take it slow. See, I got to watch myself because the more I look at you and the more I talk, chances of me falling over are pretty good. Good. Zip up that belly button. You got it right here. Now we are going to add the weights. Start to feel that shake through the inner thighs and through the legs. We're here for four. Whoo. Last three. Keep those shoulders down and back. Last two. And let's go one more and bring it in now. Let's grab those weights, okay? It should be on the side of your carriage somewhere, or on the side of the floor. Same thing, okay? Let's set up first position, okay? Heels together, toes turned out. Let's lengthen those legs all the way out, two straight legs. Let's take those weights up by the chest, and we're gonna reach them forward, but we're gonna glue them together because I'm hoping that's gonna remind you about the midline, okay? Instead of having them out here, let's close the weights and bring them together from here. We're going to exhale, bend both knees. Now, remember, this is going to change your weight distribution. So I want you to go slow. You're going to extend the legs, roll and hop through the toes. The first one's going to feel strange. Okay, but then as you keep moving, you'll feel that connection through the core and how your weight changed, right, with those weights in front of you. This definitely makes it harder. Okay, in some cases when you add weight can make things a little easier. Here it's not. Here is definitely challenging that connection and that balance. Good. You got six. Whoo. Five. Right? Doesn't look like much. Four until you're doing it. Last three. You've got two. And last one. Whoo. And bring it all the way in. Okay, so good. Okay, set one weight down. We're going to come back onto our knees. We're going to do those upper body jumps on the other side, full sequence. So facing forward to start, kneecaps are going to hang off the front edge of the carriage. My left hand is going to hold the weight right by the shoulder this time. Right palm is on the jump board. So you're, again, you're finding that hover if you want to start high kneeling and then hinge from that seat crease to reach the sits bones back for the heels. We're not sitting. We're hovering, okay? Think about your inner thighs. Pull them up and into the midline. Right from here, we're going to inhale as we leave the jump board, reach both arms. Exhale as we land. Good. So both arms reach right off the shoulder. We're not lifting them. They're just extending. I've got my left palm facing in towards the midline with that weight. So the bell of the weight is shining up and down. And I'm articulating through that entire right palm. Shoulders remain square. Ribs stay stacked over my pelvis. I keep pulling that belly button in as I leave for that strong core connection. Try to catch yourself before you hit those bumpers so that you can bring it in nice and slow with control. Whoo, we got six. We're going to add that twist in five. Last four. Good. You've got three. Last two. And one more. Let's add the twist. So on the next one, we're going to reach cross body with that left arm. Right arm pulls back and we land. Twist and reach. Good. So I'm thinking about my left ribs and them twisting towards the right corner of the jump board. Or you can think about them twisting towards that inner thigh, that right inner thigh. Good. Twist and reach. Not pushing or shoving through the arm. It's more of an articulation. 
through that wrist and palm. Last four. Whoo, we got three. Right, these all don't look like much, but I am <laughs> dripping with sweat already. Last two. And last one. And bring it all the way in. All right, let's go the other side. So I'm going to be facing my back to you, but hopefully you can see me in the mirror. We remember this sequence from the other side. So my knees are still four inches apart, parallel. We're going to start high kneeling so that we can find that nice crease at the hips, reaching the sits bones back again for that nice little hover. Right palm is going to come to the jump board. Left hand again with that weight at the shoulder. We're going to start with just a straight jump. Inhale, take it out. Exhale, bring it in. Out and in. Now remember, I told you on the other side, the base of my thumb for the position or the articulation through my pump doesn't make contact very well with the jump board. And that flexibility hopefully will increase and change for me, um, finding that mobility through the wrist. I've always typically had weak wrists, so this really helps strengthen them. And plus all the planking we do. <laughs> Good, let's add that arm now. So the next time you take it out, we're gonna go for an overhead press. And then the next time it's gonna swing out into a T, palm facing down. Palm faces in towards the midline for the overhead press. And then it faces down for the T. Bicep stays in front of the ear for that overhead press. I don't let my torso twist. I keep those shoulders square to the railing of the reformer. Good. Notice I'm not shoving through the arm. I don't want to change the structure of my body. That control through the torso and the pelvis, that's helping me remain nice and stable. Belly button's pulled up and in the whole time. All right, we're almost there. Let's go for four more just like this. Overhead press out into that T. Exhale, bring it in. Good. Overhead press. Inhale. Exhale, bring it in. Over, out to that T. And bring it in. Last two. Whoo! Those thighs now. They feel it, right? Those quads. I want you to keep thinking about pulling up with those inner thighs. Now on your next one, we're going to take it out into that T and we're going to hold it there. And we're going to jump just holding that left arm out in that T. Whoo! Making sure that weight is below the shoulder and maintaining that strong core connection. Hold it here for eight. Whew, last seven. We got six. Last five. Four. Keep going, you got it. Last three. Whew, last two. Oh my quads, right? Last one. And bring it all the way in, you guys. Whoo, my gosh, it feels good to stop that. All right, let's take that jump board off. So this is where we're going to pause for just a moment. Leave that weight on your carriage because you're going to need it. And let's take that jump board off. Whoo, okay, guys, we're going to start with a little bird dog sequence. I got my jump board a little tight today. Okay, so that's off. All right, we're going to start with a bird dog sequence. So you're gonna change your springs to one blue. So if you've been on that one extra light spring like me, you wanna bring it down to that one blue. That's gonna be great for everybody else. Look at all the sweat on my carriage already. All right, your left hand is gonna have the weight and we're gonna be rear facing, all right? Now, my right leg is gonna get the long loop, but it's gonna come up around my thigh. So you wanna just kinda nice and carefully Slip that long loop up above the knee so it's around your right thigh, okay? We're going to stay on the right side of the reformer if you're rear facing, it's the right, okay? And both hands are going to come down. The left one has the weight. I want you to find that perfect four-point kneel. Okay, so knees under hips, four inches apart and parallel, wrists under shoulders, okay? And right away, we're going to take that right leg and we're going to reach it back nice and straight. So we're going to slide that right knee across the reformer and take that right leg nice and straight. Point the toe, reach it long. Both hip bones are level, okay? My shoulders are square to the carriage, so are my hips. They're going to maintain that. 
my left hand is going to leave the carriage with that weight. Okay. And we're going to reach, actually, we're going to start it down. Let's start with a row. That way we can kind of set up. So my left hand is going to row as I pulse my right leg up and then I'm going to bring it down to the carriage, pulse the right leg down, left arm rows, weight to shoulder and then down. So as I row the weight, my right leg lifts maybe one, two inches at the most. It's not changing my low back. My low back is nice and flat. I'm keeping my hips nice and level. And that left arm, it shouldn't feel heavy. Okay, it's more of a balance challenge than anything else. My palm is facing in with that weight. Let's go for four. Whew, last three. The stability is what gets you so hot right here. Last two. Last one, hold. Okay, now that right leg, let's make sure that's nice and level. Left hand is off the carriage with that weight. We're going to take that weight and we're going to reach the left arm forward and bring it back. The left arm goes forward and back. So my palm is facing the midline. The bell of the weight is facing up and down. Okay, I've got my shoulder square and I'm reaching that right, right leg long. That right leg isn't doing anything as of right now. Good, let's go for four. We're challenging balance right here and stability through the core. Last two. Good, last one. Try to keep that weight center. Whew. On the next one, we're going to reach the left arm long and now both the right knee and the left elbow are going to pull in. So full pull. Whew. And then we're going to slide it all the way back out. Okay, core connection is really important here. I want you to move slow. It should feel really shaky. Knee and elbow pull in and straight out. That left palm comes to the shoulder, right knee under the hip, and then we take it out. Let's go for four. Can you see me shaking? Probably not. <laughs> Last three. We got two. Hang on to it. You've got this. Last one, hold your next one out there. Hold, hold it. Now my arm and my leg go up for a little pulse. Tiny, tiny little pulse. It can't be big. It'll throw you off balance. Make it small. Four, three, two, and fold it all the way in. Whoo! Oh my goodness. All these don't look like much, right? But they are killer. Okay, off to the right side of the machine. Now, keep that weight there because you're going to need it. This strap, this long loop, is going to come to your left leg now. So let's carefully take it off the right and place it on the left. Now, this time, it's going to stay around the calf. So it's going to stay below the knee, okay? This left leg is going to be your stabilizing leg. And it's going to fight the resistance of that strap the whole time we work. So that's going to add some challenge right there. So... I am standing on the floor, left foot nice and flat with that long loop around my calf. My right hand has the weight. I know I'm far away from you guys, but for flow, it had to start on this side. So we'll come around to the other side after. Left hand is going to be on that hip. Right hand has the weight. And again, that weight's going to start right at the shoulder like it did on everything else. Okay? Right from here, the right foot is going to step back into a lunge. And we're going to reach that right weight for that left ankle. So you're going to get a little twist of those right ribs towards the left inner thigh. And then we're going to come all the way back up. We're going to come down to that lunge and twist, reaching the weight for the left ankle. And then we're coming back up. So that's it. Just a lunge. The back knee is going to bend. So that right leg that steps back, it's bending and dripping for the floor. Good. My left heel remains nice and heavy even though it doesn't want to because of the pull of that strap, right? You're fighting the resistance of that carriage or that spring trying to pull you back. Lots of length on that left thigh as we come into that lunge. Let's go for two more because we've got several layers right here. Good, last one. Now we're going to add a little bit to this. So on your next one, you're not going to twist. You're going to step back into the lunge and then we're going to reach up into flamingo for an overhead press. Step back into the lunge 
Both knees bend. And then we're going to reach up into flamingo for an overhead press. My right bicep stays in front of my ear as I press up. The inner line of my right foot comes right along my left knee. So I'm nice and tight, pulling up through the middle of my body for that length and that lift. You want to find that lift through center. Good, you guys holding it here. Whew. Good, last four. Still coming off that bird dog. <laughs> that was tough. Good, last three. Good, you've got two. And last one right here. We're going to hold the flamingo. Okay, now right from here, we're going to bring the weight to the shoulder and we're going to hinge. That right leg goes out long and we hinge at the hips, looking at the floor, right arm drops down and we row. Bring it back up and reach for that overhead press. Okay, bring the elbow or the elbow bends, right weight to the shoulder, hinging forward, right leg goes long, weight to the floor, row, bring it back up, overhead press. You're going to feel that left leg quite a bit right here. So what I want you to think about is not gripping with your left toes, the ones that are on the floor. Okay, what I want you to think about is keeping those toes relaxed and keeping that entire foot connected equally to the floor. Row, core is tight for that hinge. We pull up, inner line of the foot touches the knee, press that weight up, hinge, weight towards the floor, row, bring it up, overhead. Last one right here, we're gonna hinge, okay, and now, that row is going to stay up there, and we're just going to go for a tricep kickback. Okay, nothing else is changing, so we're balancing on that left leg. My left knee has to remain soft, because if it locks out, I won't be able to maintain balance. My right elbow is staying lifted by my waist as I work through that tricep, bringing that weight up. So I'm just bending and extending at the elbow. That's the only thing that's changing. Everything else is isometric. Both hips are level. Belly button's pulled in for four. Whoo, last three. We got two. We got one more layer right here. Whoo, on your next one, we're going to take that weight and we're going to reach it forward. Bicep is in front of my right ear. We're going to pull the knee in towards the elbow for a little rounding, and we're going to extend back to that long leg hinge. So we're going to find some flexion, pulling the knee and elbow in. Ooh, last four. The flexion may not be deep, right? Because we're still balancing. Last three. We got two. And last one. And bring it all the way down. Oh, boy, that left leg, right? That got it, too. Let's take that strap off the leg, hang it up. We're coming onto the carriage now. So we're going to work through those arms a little bit more. But those legs will still get it because we're going to be in a nice little hover at the same time. So right hand has the weight. Left hand is going to choke up on this strap. So I don't have the short or long loop. I've got my hands around the metal carabiner. If you don't have a metal carabiner and you're up around the knot of the rope, perfect. That's where you want to be, okay? So same thing, starting nice and tall, sternum over pubic bone. We're going to hinge at that seat crease, reaching the, the sits bones back for the heels. Gives us a tilt to the torso, and we're going to hold that. My left arm is going to start long. Okay, my palm is kind of lined up with my uh, solar plexus right through the center of my body. That right arm, okay, that's going to start right at the shoulder, just like it has on every other exercise. We're going to row with the left and press forward with the right, and then bring it back. Row with the left, bringing the elbow close to the waist. Right arm extends forward. Nice and simple. I don't want you to twist, not yet. That is going to come, but we're not going to start with the twist. Right now, I want you to maintain structure through the shoulder girdle. So those shoulders are square to the rear of the machine. And I've got those ribs stacked over the pelvis again. Whew, let's go for four. Last three. 
Good, we've got two. Still thinking about those inner thighs and how they connect to the midline, pulling up through the pelvic floor. Now right here, we're gonna start to add a twist. So as you row back with the left, we're gonna take that right arm across body. But now as we go back to start, we're also gonna let that left arm twist across the body. So the left ribs twist. Okay, so it's a twist in both directions. Good, maintaining a quiet pelvis. So we're twisting from the waistline up, thinking more about the rib basket than anything else. Good, let's go for four. Last three. Ooh, we're gonna change that right arm to a bicep curl in two, left arm will continue to row. And last one right here. Now on the next one, let's square off those shoulders. My right palm is gonna face forward now and I've got that weight down by my thigh. I'm gonna row with the left and bicep curl with the right and then release. I'm pulling the left elbow in and down. My right arm just does the bicep curl. Nice and simple. A Little more coordination than anything else. And again, maintaining a quiet pelvis and a stable shoulder girdle. Good, last four. Last three. Exhaling as you pull that row in. Last two. Ooh, and last one. And release that all the way down. All right, for this one, we're gonna set the weight on the floor. So set that one weight down alongside the right side of the reformer. We're gonna work on that right tricep before we move on. Okay, so I'm gonna put my um, headrest down because it was still up. And now I'm gonna still stay choked up on that rope, all right? My left hand is gonna be on the reformer or the headrest. You wanna find a nice four-point kneel, okay? So kinda like we did on that bird dog before. We're finding that again, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders, that right arm is gonna start long by your side. That right arm is gonna go just for a straight sweep to start. So again, maintaining a stable shoulder girdle. That right arm is gonna come up alongside the body and then lower down. Just a little sweep to start. Now, if that one blue feels too aggressive, we got three more like this, you can always switch to that extra light spring because these triceps, I know they burn out fast, really small muscle. Last two. You can also switch to the short loop or the long loop. Now, on your next one, I am gonna switch to the short loop for this next one, because I know it won't make it much further. Okay, we're gonna take that right arm up and hold it up there. Now, I'm gonna bend at the elbow, my palm faces the body, and then I extend through the tricep and sweep it down. Okay, bringing that right arm up, hold it up there. Bend at the elbow, extend, bring it down. That's the move, we got four more of those. Bring it up. Bend at the elbow, Whoo! extend. I can feel my right waistline. Make sure your hips are level. You've got equal weight in through your left palm and your right shin. Whoo! let's go one more. All the way up, hold, bend, extend, bring it down. On our next one, we're just gonna hold it up there. We're gonna bring that right arm up and hold, hold, hold. Now just bend the elbow, bend and extend. That's it, just the kickback now. No more sweep. Woo, we got four. Hang on to it. Last three, I always feel like I'm muscling through these last ones, last two. Oh my goodness, you guys, one more. And bring it all the way down. Whew, I think my form went out the window on that one. Pretty lousy. All right, you guys, we're going to work on a chest expansion now. That's going to take us on to the other side of everything else, okay? So we're going to start right here with the left foot forward. So bring your left foot onto the headrest, okay? Both hands are going to take the short loops, okay? So you've got a solid, flat left foot. Right shin is down, okay? 
My left knee is behind my toes, but just in front of the ankle. And I'm going to bring those short loops long and low by my side. They should be right alongside the body, okay? Now, we're going to press back from here. So on your inhale, shoulders are down. We're going to inhale, press back from the side seam, and then exhale, bring it back to side body. Inhale, press back from there, and then bring back to side body. So notice I'm not bringing my arms in front of my body. They stay and stop right at my side seam. Inhale, press back from there. Exhale, stop at side body. So I've got quite a bit of tension on these ropes at all times. Good, inhale. Good, opening up that chest but keeping the shoulders down. That inhale creates that internal length again. Now I want you to start to think about your inner thighs because they're gonna start to need to pull up and into that pelvic floor because we're gonna start to hover. You've got two more right here. Good, last one. All right, now holding right here at the side, those back toes, my right toes are gonna turn under because they're gonna help with support. We're gonna find a little hover so you, that left foot needs to be entirely flat right here. Inner thighs are gonna squeeze up and in and we're gonna hold a little one inch hover. My arms are gonna press back into that chest expansion. Exhale back to side body. Inhale, whoo. Cannot use any sort of aggressive movement here. You've got four, otherwise you'll go flying. Last three, it needs to be slow and controlled. Whoo. Last two, keep that back knee low. And last one, and bring it all the way down. Oh my goodness, those are always tough, they never fail. Okay, we're gonna stand for some bicep curls. Now, if you are uncomfortable standing on the reformer, you can kneel and do the same exact movements here, okay? If you're comfortable, come up slice and slow, one hand on those shoulder blocks, okay? We are gonna hold a squat, so I don't want you to be two straight legs on the reformer right now. That's not gonna give you any sort of stability. Make sure your feet are shoulder width apart, so a little wider than your hips. We're gonna go for the short loops today. Okay, short loops in your hands. Now, from here, no big yanking on the ropes because that'll send you head first into the well of your machine. And that's not what I want for you today. Okay, so let's find a little demi squat. Toes parallel, okay, little bend through the knees, little hinge at the hips. Torso is a little bit forward. Okay, we've got those palms facing up. We're gonna bring those arms nice and long in front of the body, palms just below the underarm. On your exhale, let's curl through the bicep. Inhale, release. Exhale, curl. Inhale, release, nice and slow. So what I want you to maintain, again, is those squared off shoulders, neutral shoulder girdle, shoulders are down and back. Okay, we're not hiking through the shoulder. Good, we're keeping those elbows a little bit higher today to focus a little bit more on the bicep rather than the core. The core is still working. Okay, it's giving us all that stability and control. Good, let's go for four. Whoo, last three. Good, you've got two more, nice and slow. These are slow movements, nice and controlled. All right, now on your next bicep curl, you're gonna hold it. So we're gonna find that bicep curl, hold. Right from here, my elbows are gonna go up and down. One inch up and down. So my fingertips pulse for the ceilings. Notice I'm not gripping the ropes. I've got my fingers long. I'm moving the shoulder blades down my back body as my elbows get higher. Holding that demi squat still. So you should feel those quads. Whew. We got four. Keep those heels heavier than the toes, but keep the toes down. Last three. You've got two. Whew. Last one. 
Continue to hold your bicep curl. Don't let that go. Let's pulse the squat. One inch up and down. Little lift from the sitting bones. So I want you to focus on those two sits bones. They narrow or get closer together as you pulse up, and then they broaden as you lower. Focus on that movement in the body. You've got eight. Woo. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Oh boy. Three. Last two. And last one. Woo. And nice and slow. We're going to grab the shoulder block with one hand and come on down to our knees. Oh. <laughs> Good, you guys. All right. Chest expansion, other side. I know, came around pretty fast. All right, right foot on the shoulder block, or on the headrest, left knee and shin down, okay? Same thing. We got those short loops in our hands, okay, and our arms are gonna be at the side body to start. Ooh, let me get my hair out of my face because I'm all sweaty. Okay, right here is where you're starting. Make sure you've got equal weight distribution between the sole of your right foot and your left shin. Shoulders are down and back from here. Inhale, we're gonna press back from the side seam. Exhale, back to the side seam. Inhale, press back. Exhale, release. I'm not bringing my arms in front of the body because several reasons. One, I don't want the shoulder to take over. Two, I want the core to remain connected and I want tension on those straps the entire time. I don't wanna release that tension, I want it to be working. So my right and left waistline, they're on the whole time right here. Whew. Let's go for four. Last three, and then we'll find that beautiful hover. Last two, it never gets easier, but I'm not gonna lie, I do love this exercise. <laughs> I, I love the challenge. Good, last one right here. All right, now holding them at the side seam, we've still got tension on those straps. Turn those back toes under. Okay, right from here, we're gonna find those inner thighs again. Remember that connection they have to the pelvic floor. And we're gonna inhale as we lift up and hold. Right from here, we're gonna press back. Exhale, release. Whoo, inhale, press back. And release, you got this, hang on to it, nice control. You've got four more, four. Ooh, last three, keep that back knee low. Don't get any taller. Last two, get that core a little tighter. Last one right here. And set that back knee down. Whoo, gosh. Okay, you guys, hang up that right loop. It's time for the left arm to work. Okay, those triceps, here we go. Mine burnt out on the other side, remember? <laughs> I'll try to maintain better form on this side. Okay. Choking up on that rope to start. I am gonna go to my short loop then, but you can be where you feel most comfortable. Your knees are under your hips. Your right hand is on the headrest or somewhere on the carriage. Now, the closer you are to the rear, the less aggressive this is gonna be, okay? The further you are back to that uh, foot bar, the harder, okay? So right here, left arm long and low with that strap. We're gonna start with a sweep. So let's square off those shoulders. We're gonna inhale, sweep that left arm up and back. Exhale, bring it long and low. Now again, notice my palm is stopping right below my shoulder. It's not coming up here because then my shoulder needs to take over to get it all the way back up here. That's not what I want. I want it to remain in the core. So the belly button is up and in. We're gonna lift from there. Whoo, we got four more. Oh boy, that short loop can't come fast enough. Last three. Always on these. I'm like, I think I made a bad decision. Last two. Whew. And one more. Ooh, okay, right here. Reset if you need to, I need to. I'm gonna get my short loop. Okay, from here. We're gonna go for that sweep and that hold for that kickback, okay? So on your inhale, we're coming up and back, hold. Bend at the elbow, palm faces the body. Extend through the elbow, sweep it down. Try not to let that torso twist. I was twisting a little right there. Whew. All right, you guys. We got four more. I don't know. You keep going. You keep going if I burn out. 
Last three. You got this. You've got it. Up. Whoo, back. I don't normally do this on a blue either. I'm going to go for my long loop. You keep going. We got two more right here. Two more. Bend. Extend. Sweep it down. One more. Lifting it up and back. Whoo, bend. Extend. And down. Now we just have that kickback. Whoo, reset. Tighten the core. Bring that left arm up. Hold. Just the kickback. Bend, extend, bend, extend. You've got four. Whoo. Guys, these are hard for me. Last three. You've got two. Stay with me. I need you. <laughs> I need you here. Last one. And bring it all the way down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Roll out those shoulders. All right. We're going to come into that rear facing arms with that row. So grab your weight in your left hand, okay? And my right hand is gonna choke up on that strap. And let's just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, yes, okay, right? We're good. We are good. All right, all right, you guys. So from here, we're gonna find that little hover. Okay, so again, starting tall sternum over pubic bone, hinging at that seat crease, reaching the sits bones, for the heels, okay? My left arm is gonna take that weight up by the shoulder and my right arm's got the, the choked up strap. We're gonna row with the right and extend with the left and bring it back to start. Core is tight, gets tighter as I row. I keep the shoulder square right now, I'm not twisting yet. That's coming, that's coming. Good, keep it here, keep it nice and tight. Let's go for four. Last three. We've got two. And last one, we're gonna add that twist. Okay, right here, we're gonna row. We're gonna twist with the right, left arm goes across, and come back and we twist to the left. We twist to the right, and we twist to the left. So I'm allowing that twist to go in both directions, keeping the pelvis quiet, but letting the waistline rotate. Focusing more on my ribs than I am on those shoulders or anything like that. Okay, they all come along for the ride, but I want you to focus on the twist from the rib basket. All right, let's go for four more right here. Four. Last three. Whoo, we got two. And last one. Okay, now we're gonna switch to that bicep curl. So right at that start position, my shoulders are gonna remain square to the rear again. Palm is gonna face the rear of the machine all the way extended through the elbow. We're gonna row with the right and bicep curl with the left, and then extend. Now I'm staying square, I'm not twisting anymore. I've still got that belly button pulled up and in. Good, really focusing on control and coordination. Okay, that weight's not meant to feel heavy right here. Whew. All right, you guys, let's go for six. Last five. I'm like, can you tell I'm letting my heart rate come down after that tricep? <laughs> Last three. We got two. And let's go one more since I think I missed one in there. One more right here and take it all the way out. All right, we're gonna come into that lunge and hinge. <clears throat> so, stepping off to the left side of the machine. That long loop, okay, is gonna come around your right, uh, right calf. Okay, so up on that right side, on the right calf, the leg closest to the reformer. Left hand is gonna have the weight. Now I'm gonna ground that right foot. Okay, and I've got some um, resistance on the, from the carriage already to deal with. So the right foot's gonna remain nice and flat on the floor, heavier through the heels than the toes. The toes are gonna wanna grip. Mine did on the other side, they will again. 
but try to keep them as relaxed as possible. Okay, left hand's going to start at the shoulder with that weight, right hand on the hip. We're going to step back for that lunge to start and then come back up. Okay, we're going to add that little twist and reach with the left arm. So the next time you take that lunge down, you're going to twist and reach that weight for the right ankle and come back up. You're lunging, twisting and reaching and coming back up. So reaching for lots of length on that right thigh as you come into that lunge. Back knee strips straight for the floor. That left knee comes straight down for the floor. We don't touch the floor. We just hover. Good. Thinking about my ribs twisting for the reach of the weight. Good. Holding it right here. We've got four more. Good. If you feel that grip through the right toes already, try to release them. Good. Last three. Whew, we got two. Last one. Now we're going to change it. On the next one, we're not going to twist. We're just going to lunge back. And as we come up, we're going to pull to flamingo, left arm up towards the ceiling. Come back into your lunge and pull up for the ceiling. So the inner side of my left foot pulls towards my right knee. My left bicep comes close to my ear. Again, I'm trying to find that midline connection, so I pull up nice and tight through center. Got a lot of fighting going on because that carriage is trying to pull me. So you wanna resist that. Whew. Good, as lunges aren't hard enough, <laughs> right? As if they're not hard enough. Last four. Good, we've got three. Last two. Okay, last one, we're gonna hold it right up here. Right from here, we're gonna pull that left weight down. We're gonna hinge for the floor, row the weight, and come back up, overhead press. Bring it down, hinge for the floor, hinging, rolling the pelvis over that right femur bone, the top of the right thigh bone. So that roll happens on this hinge right here. Good, I'm less worried whew, about the choreography on the left side. I'm more concerned about what's happening on the right side of your body. Look, I lost my balance. I gotta stop talking. <laughs> Good, it pulls down, you hinge. Find that long flat back, let the weight drop, row it up, pull it all the way up to that flamingo. Whoo, we got two more. Hinge, row, pull it up, whoo, and reach. Last one. Bring it up. Now we are gonna find that hinge and we're gonna hold it. So on your next one, we're gonna hinge forward Hold it right here. Now I'm just gonna row that arm up for a nice row, keep the elbow lifted, and we're just gonna go for that tricep kickback. Whoo, right here. Everything else is isometric. I'm bending and extending that elbow, and I'm trying desperately not to twist. Whoo, hold on to it. You've got this, you've got six. Last five. You've got four. Last three, we're uh, testing the stamina on that right leg, three, Two, last one, right from here. Take that left arm up and overhead, and now we're gonna find those flexion pulls. Woo, I'm gonna fall over, <laughs> and out. We wanna round the spine, so I'm gonna try to reset here. Round and extend, you've got four. Round, I'm not rounding much at all because that right leg, whoo, is burnt out already. Here we go, let's try again. There we go, three, Two, oh boy, woo, last one, I don't know, yes, uh, and extend it out and bring it down, you guys. Fought for it on that one, right? Fought for it all the way. That's where we get stronger though. Okay, we're coming onto the carriage, guys, for that bird dog, so that long loop is gonna come around the left leg, so bring it up above the knee. Woo, that right leg is tired. Okay, from here, my right hand has the weight, I'm gonna find that four-point kneel, okay? I'm still on that one blue spring. Woo. 
Okay, right from here. We're gonna reach the left leg long, okay? So knees under hips, that's where they start. Wrists under shoulder. We're gonna reach that left leg all the way out and back and hold it there. Find that nice flat back. Hips are level, shoulders are level. We're gonna row the right arm as we pulse the left leg. It's a row and a pulse. That right arm isn't gonna go far. Okay, we've got the palm facing the middle of the body. The left leg is also not gonna go far. It's a tiny, tiny little pulse. These tiny controlled movements today. We have so many of them, right? Whew. Definitely a sweaty one. Let's go for four. Three. Good, lots of focus right here. Two. On your next one, you're gonna hold that flat back. Now that weight's gonna stay at the shoulder. We're just gonna reach the right arm long and bring it back. Reaching out for that full bird dog and bringing it in. That left leg doesn't go anywhere now. It's staying where it's at. Whew. Hold it here. We're gonna reach both leg and arm. Two more of just the arm. Last one. Okay, now right here, hold that long leg, long arm. Both pull in, elbow and knee, and both extend out. Whew. Both pull in and both extend. Hold it here. Nice and controlled. You've got this for four more. Last three. Notice my knee grazes the carriage. Two. That keeps my hips level. Last one, hold. Leg and arm, pulse. Pulse them up. Half an inch pulse. Four, three, two, and bring it all the way in. Oh my gosh, all right. I've said that a lot today. <laughs> I've said that a lot. Let's slowly take off that strap nice and carefully. Okay, hang that up. Oh, I wanna make sure I didn't forget anything with you guys. We're gonna end with a forearm plank. That's our end. Set that weight down, okay? Toes, let's change our spring down to one yellow spring. No blue, if you got the yellow, if you got the extra light, if you don't, stay on that blue, okay? Both feet are gonna come onto that little platform behind you. Forearms are gonna come down onto the carriage. Right from here, we're gonna pick those knees up and we're gonna extend that carriage out and we're gonna hold. Shoulders over those elbows. Tight core, we've got the lift between the shoulder blades. Breathe into the, those back ribs. Right here, we're gonna inhale as we hinge the elbows forward one inch and pull them back on the exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, extending through the right and left waistline and then pulling it back. Little hinge, nice and controlled. Whew, my feet are hip width distance apart. We've got six. Whew, last five. You've got four. Last three. You've got two. And last one. Don't go anywhere. Right from here. We're gonna step up to our hands. So I want you to take your feet a little bit wider. Okay, wider than your shoulders. Right from here, we're gonna step up to our left palm. Right palm's gonna follow. Back down. Now right palm up. Left palm follows and down. Good, I want you to maintain a strong torso, okay? Resist the urge to shift your weight too much. Try to stay center. Good, you guys, you gotta resist a moving carriage. I know that isn't easy. These are hard enough on the floor. Now we add a carriage in there. Good, let's go for four, this is it. Last three. You got two. And last one. Good, you guys. Bring the knees in and down. Ooh, and let's take a nice child's pose. Keep the knees wide on the carriage. Let those arms come onto the rails. Oh, and just reach those sits bones back for the foot bar. 
Let your shoulders relax towards the carriage. Oh, and just give yourselves two big breaths right here. Letting those ribs go wide. Expand them towards the sides of the rooms. Fill those ribs with air. Exhale every ounce out. Good. One more big inhale. Exhale all that air out. Good, you guys. Now I know I went way over, so let's just do a quick stretch. We're going to take that right leg into pigeon. So it's going to come forward on the carriage. Left ankle is just going to hang out up across the platform. Okay, now in this stretch, if you feel good keeping the chest up, stay right there. If you want to bring the chest down towards the headrest and extend those arms across the rails, go for it. Okay, feeling that stretch through the right inner thigh, the right hip. Again, two big breaths right here. Good, one more. Good, releasing that. Coming on up. Let's switch legs out. Good. Left leg comes forward. Right leg's going to hang out across that platform. Okay. Lifting the chest. Staying up there if you want. If you want to come down for a little deeper stretch through that left side, you can do that. Hold it right there. Once you found your, your stretching point where you feel comfortable and where you feel like you're kind of pushing the limits a little bit, take two big breaths. Good. One more. Good, and come on up nice and slow. We're going to do one last little spinal twist. You're going to come on your back. We did a lot of cross-diagonal sling work today. Lots of stability, lots of control. If your foot bar is up there, great. You can press your feet against the foot bar. If you've got your um, platform, you can press them up against the platform. But one leg, okay, is going to bend. I got my right knee bent. I'm just going to take that across the body, letting my hips pick up. My right hip picks up off the carriage. My right arm is out to the right. My right knee is reaching to the left. I'm looking at my right hand. Nice little spinal twist right here. Two big breaths. Good, one more. Good, coming all the way back through center, nice and slow. Taking that left knee into a bent position across to the right side of the body, letting that left hip pick up. And now I'm going to take that left arm out to the left, looking at my left fingers. Nice spinal twist right here, letting that release. Two big breaths. Good, one more. Coming all the way back through center, letting that carriage come all the way in, both knees into the chest. Give them one last hug. Give yourself a hug. That was not an easy workout. You guys, you did it. Nice job. I know it's a little bit over. All right. Nice and sweaty. Sometimes in this movement, and I, I feel this way, especially about Pilates, um, sometimes I get lost in the movement. Um, and, I, and the reason that is, is because when you start to feel that connection build in the body and you feel like you're starting to master it, um, you want to hang on. You want to feel that a little deeper and you want the body to remember that connection it felt so that the next time we go for that exercise again, it just gets stronger from there. So don't be afraid to reset, concentrate, slow down and get lost in the movement because that's one of the beautiful things about Pilates is that you can just refocus your mind, okay? And everything else goes away. I'll tell you something. I didn't think about one other thing during that entire hour that we were together except the movement I was doing with you. So it's clearing. It's, it can be very self-soothing. I know you're working hard and you're sweating and you're shaking, but at the same time, mentally, it can be some, some nice clarity. So I hope you feel that too. If you have questions for me on some of this movement, it was really tough today. Um, if you have questions for me, please don't be afraid to ask. Leave me comments below the video. I respond to everybody. It may take me a couple of days, but I always do. Um, if you have things you'd like to see, let me know. I love the inspiration. If you like this video, please hit that little thumbs up button. Hit subscribe so you can see when my next video comes out. And good news, we have a live reformer workout coming this Sunday, May 16th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, so PST. So if you're around on Sunday and you want a nice sweaty reformer workout with me, I will be live with you. All you have to do is show up on this YouTube channel and I'll be there waiting for you. Okay, I will give you some 
hints about what it's going to be and what we're going to need, if anything, before that. If you follow me on social media, just P Fit. I'm the, that on Instagram and on Facebook. So if you follow me there, you'll get little hints about what's going to happen on Sunday. Um, and I will hang around with you after the workout to chat about Pilates, modifications, questions, thoughts, comments, anything you have to say, what you're doing the rest of your Sunday. I would love to hear it. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. Awesome job, you guys. I'll see you next time.